I'm gonna throw it over to Dale. Well, now that I'm on the record, I won't use my last name. Uh, no, uh, Kit and Dale Hendon here, Stafford County Economic Development. Um, certainly excited to be here for uh, you know kind of our second iteration of, of this, and, and looking forward to growing the, the program and talking to folks about business. And if we do do our jobs right, business in Stafford. Hi, I'm Trina Steves, and I'm here um, to learn more about business. I'm starting a rehab veterinary clinic. Folks online, Tom, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Good to meet everybody. I'm Tom Snyder. I founded Riot. Uh, we're a nonprofit, so I don't know technically if you'd say we're a business owner because nonprofits don't have ownership, but I guess you could in some way say say that I am. Uh, but but one of the things that I'm sure Jen's going to talk about is that we spend a lot of time helping people that want to start their own businesses to you know figure out how to do that and how, how to grow them and, and ultimately, hopefully, to create jobs. Uh, Richard? Okay. Any uh, of the other folks online? Can anyone else hear me? It looks like Khalifa's audio is still trying to connect or something, Jen. I'm not sure if there's a technical issue there or not. Um, and Richard, you were on mute if you tried to say hi a moment ago. Still pouring coffee. And for the folks online, you're also um, able to call in if you aren't able to um, hear us via uh, the audio through the laptops. Uh, Richard's mic. He's working on his mic. He just sent something in the chat. Okay, awesome. Well, we'll happily pause uh, when you guys are, are able to um, unmute yourself or connect via audio. Um, so don't hesitate to... Um, Okay, you're good. You can hear us. So cool. Um, I'm going to kick us off with just a little bit about um, Riot. Um, let me find the right screen to do that. There we go. I should be able to do it from here. There we go. Oops, too many clicks. Okay. So, um, Riot, we're, uh, as Tom said, an economic development nonprofit that's focused on job creation in the technology sector broadly. Um, we really believe that technology is vital to all businesses in the 21st century. We're all integrating it in some way. But at the end of the day, business is business. And there are some core fundamentals that um, this series and some of our other programs cover. Um, we do a variety of events and convenings like this one. Um, we also run um, happy hours and networking opportunities to connect with other business owners in a variety of different industries. Um, and then we also run a business foundations program and an accelerator program for companies who are growing and scaling their business. Like I said, our philosophy really is that technology is vital um, to all of your businesses. We're all utilizing it in some bit way, even if you think that you're just a traditional Main Street business or something that wouldn't traditionally use technology. You've got a computer, you've got to use a website, you've got to use social media, you've got to do sales. All of that um, can be bettered through te technology and different programs and ways to connect. Um, and so we'd be happy to have deeper conversations with you about all of those kinds of things um, as you continue down your business journey. Um, but we hope that some of these conversations today will lay some of that groundwork. So today's session, um, Business Fundamentals 101. Uh, if you join us for our foundations program, this is a refresher, but also dives a little deeper. Um, throughout the course of today's uh, conversation, please feel free to stop and ask questions. Um, I will definitely call on people to say, hey, how do, do you think this relates to your business? Um, and just try to like drive a little conversation around some of the topics that we'll be covering. So to kick us off, um, we have a smaller group. Um, and for those of you who are joining us online, uh, and if you figured out your audio, that's great. Uh, and you can jump in and uh, verbally talk to us. But if you want to drop it in the chat, that's also great. Um, but what do you think is a fundamental business truth? You will pay taxes. Taxes? <laughs> Unless you run a nonprofit. 
You would have to have to solve a problem. Yes, you have to have solve somebody else's problem. So what, what else? I'm reading the chat. Richard, feel free to drop it in the chat um, and I can work on trying to get you to call in really quick. You will, you must have sales. Sales. You gotta make money. You gotta make money. Yep. You gotta be legal. You gotta be legal. That's I mean, taxes. Have... Yeah. Um, David, welcome. Uh, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and uh, you think you got a, an understanding of what a fundamental business truth is. Have a system in place always at least have a simple checklist yeah. so when you go in and get your requirements you can and even with your employees I'm, I'm i'm trying to train interns right now for for testing my my framework so i'm still developing it right now and i'm trying to do everything that failed in every project that i worked on so that we can have a checklist so that when i'm bidding on these contracts i don't repeat the same mistakes that my prior companies made and i try to keep the checklist real simple yeah, that's great. Yeah, particularly as you add employees, right? People need to all work in a coordinated way. And so having some kind of standard processes, standard, yeah. teams, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Need um, customers. Yes. All of that drives into the sales pipeline. You got to be able to document it all so that you know who, you, who you're talking to. Right. Um, at its core, fundamental business truths really are um, serving or as being essential parts of your business. Um, at that core, uh, we focus on first principles, four very simple um, four first principles. And if you can accomplish these things in your business, you can be successful. Too many books. Okay. The first one is that business has to solve a problem. Uh, when you establish, when you're first establishing your business, you need to identify what that problem your business is solving for your customers. And it's really important to emphasize here that your business is solving your customer's problem. Um, if you're not solving someone else's problem, you're probably not going to be making money. You have to determine overall your problem solution fit, AKA the evidence that you have done this, that you figured out what somebody else's problem is and that your solution is viable to solve that. Um, a lot of this is done through conversations with your customers or your potential customers. Um, and to David's point, documenting those things and doing it in a systematic way so that you can refer back to your notes and know where you, can, you started and where you've gone and what's the journey that got you there. Jennifer, I could jump in with a question. Absolutely. Um, so I, I'm thinking through not wearing my Sabertech economic development hat for a minute. And I'm thinking about the business says my wife and I own. And because they are traditionally around hospitality, mm -hmm. what, how do I identify a, a, an acute problem versus, let's say, Katrina's business, where, I mean, that is a problem. There is a, you know, animal owner that has an existing problem and you are the service to provide it. I don't, no one has to do what I offer in that business. So how's that a problem? I think that when it, when you're looking at the hospitality industry, you have to be like the problem that you're solving for somebody else is that they want to participate in that activity. Um, and if you aren't able to like find those customers or find any demand, you're not, you know, that's, you're not going to get paid and therefore your business isn't going to be successful. So it's the wants side. So it's the wants side of it. Okay. Um, and a little bit more because it's, you know, more on the, I'm using this, utilizing this as a service, but you know, what do people who utilize your, you know, utilize that hospitality service you provide want and where, you know, what problems do they come to? I, Dale has a boat business, um, a, a cruise, a river cruise business. Um, and they're coming to you to say like, oh, I like have kids. I have, you know, elderly parents. I, you know, need this to be X amount of time. 
it needs to fit into my schedule. Those are all kinds of things that the problems around that that you have to talk to them about to figure out what's the right mode to provide. Okay, makes sense. Thank you for allowing my interruption. Anybody else okay. online want to add to that or ask additional questions? I thought it was good. Okay. Well, second fundamental uh, business truth. Um, you must be able to connect your solution to your customers. Um, like I said, with the first one, customer discovery, some initial questions to think about is, who are my customers? Uh, where, what, why do they want to buy my product? And how am I reaching them? Um, ultimately, this starts by identifying who your target market is. And this refers to the group of customers that most likely to want to buy your product. And we just had somebody walk in, so we're going to let them join us. Welcome. How are you doing? Good morning. <clears throat> uh, does, does anyone, everyone heard of the definition target market? Sure. Yeah. I think a good example of like defining target markets is around shoes, selling shoes. We all wear shoes. <laughs> everyone wears shoes. Um, but if you're selling like a very specific type of running shoe, your target market has drastically decreased to only those people who are, you know, doing that elite kind of running. Uh, so who are those people? Where are those people? How are you reaching them? All of that good stuff. You need to also be able to define what makes you stand out to your competition, AKA your unique value proposition. Um, and that's a clear statement that explains the benefits of your product and how it solves your customers' problems and why it's different from the rest. David, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your business um, and who you think your target market is? Um, actually, I do um, government contracting and I usually do, uh, we'll call it dashboards. It's usually workforce reporting, uh, personnel, HR, budgets. And I'm also building a side product. So that's kind of why I'm here is for the side product, because I'm, I've got some patents on some dashboards that I'm trying to incorporate my methodology into the implementation of the dashboards. But I do the service and the product. So I'm doing, I'm doing both. But right now I'm focusing on the product part. Would, would the customer of that product be um, like organizations like ADP or other PEOs that are doing HR services? No, it's usually it's usually a government agency. An agency directly. Okay. Yep. Agency directly. Cool. Very interesting. Yeah. Welcome. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your business or idea? Um, how you doing? I'm doing good. Um, how you doing, fellas? Um, my name is Harold Sappin. Um, I have my own company called Three Fish One Beer. And initially, um, during COVID, COVID made the life of all of us change. And it gave me some perspective to do some research to venture out into you know, the research aspect into the business. But before I get to the business, um, I have a construction back, background. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Phoenix Salon Suites. But it's a it's a sweet rental concept where individuals that own this, that want to be business owners have the ability to rent this rent the space. It's not really renting the space, but on agreement to utilize the space so they can have a business of their own without the overhead in itself. Um, I like to tell people. Well, they consider me a partner. I should tell people I was really an overpriced worker. You know, I did really, really good for myself at the time. I have over 52 bills throughout the United States. So that's where I'm really, um, my focus was really on the construction. Um, the downside is when COVID came about, different ideas and different functions with the company, the group that I was with, they wanted to move to the West Coast. I lived in New York City. I lived in Washington, D.C. I lived in Miami. I also lived in San Diego different times in my life. I live in Leesburg right now. I refuse to move for the sake of any individual or any particular uh, opportunity. You know, sometimes all opportunities are great opportunities. So where I'm at. 
So basically, I have a uh, non compete where I can't do no construction. So fine, moving right along with the uh, exception, us all dealing with the pandemic. I said, what can I do to be creative which I can give back? What can I do to help some of the current problems that we're faced with on a daily basis that I can contribute in? So I started thinking about food. Food is a resource that we all need. We need the fuel so we don't need to function. So I started looking at different sectors. I looked at the poultry um, industry. Real messy. Real messy. It's a lot of Cattle industry, long time maturation for a cow to go out. The pork industry, same thing. I came up in that fish. In the name of my company, we fish one beer. Growing up, I enjoyed kingfish, red snapper, and salmon. That's where the three fish actually came about. And what likes fish? Bears. So, Basically, I put it together like that, but we fish one bit actually an acronym. Fish actually means finding innovative solutions for humans, and bears building equity over average returns. So I said, I'm a farm fish. So I've started doing the research in the agriculture department field, started making some liaisons, doing a lot of things. And you know, their maturation period with fish is just as short as chickens. You know, to my six to eight month period, and learning that um, a lot of times we get a lot of misconceptions because people hear about tilapia and they think it's a fake fish. A lot of people have that misconception because it's something that's being introduced to you for the first time, and you hear that it's farm raised, like, oh, I don't want no parts of that. So, as I'm doing my research and I'm seeing, like, okay, this is a interesting place where I can actually make an impact and share not only for the community but on the world spectrum. You know, um, each sector, like the sectors that I just mentioned, the cow industry, the poultry industry, the seafood industry, and the pork industry, right now they're um, required, they all produce about 21 million metric tons of food to feed the people worldwide combined. Based on the current population, it's about 9 billion people and about 2035 is projected to have 10 billion people. Each one of those sectors is going to be required to produce 21 million metric tons each. So I said, okay, it has sustainability, it has, you know, we can make some money doing this thing. So it's not doing more research and I'm saying, okay. Howard, I'm so sorry. I hate to cut you off, but we can we table this conversation and uh, after to continue after our uh, chat today. Okay, no problem. Awesome. You um, asked, I was no, no, no. I know. I um I got the the concept of where you're where you're going with the business, and I would right. love to dive deeper in. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. No problem. Um, but so. Back to target markets and unique value proposition. As you connect to your customers, one of the things to also think about is how are you reaching them and marketing at a high level um, with those with those customers. Um, the first step in marketing is really figuring out what channels you need to use to reach your customers. Um, when you look at who your customers are and how they're currently interacting with you. Um, each other, your competitors, so on. Uh, you can find out like where they really are and how they're interacting. Um, a lot of us will interact with people via websites and newsletters and social media, um, as well as you know our competitors and just the general public. So thinking through, am I meeting people mainly in person? Am I meeting people mainly online? How are people figuring out who I am, what my business is? Are all things to kind of think about. Um, at the end of the day, most of us will probably need a website. I would say 99% of us will need a website. Um, in today's world, what do we do first when we hear of a new business? We Google them. Um, so having a good website that's informative and um, can provide good information to your customers uh, at that first glance will ultimately set you up for success. And there's 
tons of website builders out there that can do it for you, uh, that can help you do it yourself, or you can definitely hire an agency to do it um, as you continue down that path. Um, also, most of us will probably need to leverage social media in some way, shape, or form. Let's face it, we're all on social media. Everyone's on social media. Um, but you don't necessarily need to be on every platform to reach your customers. And we'll dive a little bit deeper into that. My goodness, there we go. Um, this is very not clicky where I need it to be. <laughs> on the subject of social media, um, talking about uh, the different platforms, there are a ton of them, they're all over, um, but each really have different target demographics that they, they tend to work with. Um, for us who are the older millennials, Facebook was popular with our parents and grandparents, and it is less popular with our uh, with the youth nowadays. Um, so if your target market is 14 to 18 year olds, Facebook might not be the best platform for you. Um, if your target market is older adults, Facebook, LinkedIn, where are they, who are they talking with, um, all of those kinds of things. Each platform also has different purposes and um, best use cases. Um, also, the amount of content you can post. You can only uh, do 200 character, 280 characters on Twitter, but you can write paragraphs on paragraphs on paragraphs on Facebook and LinkedIn and so on. YouTube is video is mainly video content. You're not going to want to put a bunch of articles or anything on your YouTube page. So determining where your audience is, what content resonates with them, and then tailoring your content to that is important. We're also all collecting data and information on our customers, um, or we should be if we're not doing it. Um, one platform that's really useful to help you figure out some of that data behind your customers um, is Google Analytics. This is a service through Google that you can tie to your website uh, to figure out where your users are coming from, um, you know, figuring out the success of your marketing and your, your different campaigns, um, tracking your completions such as purchases or adding products to carts, so on and so forth. Um, it's a free service. I There's tons of YouTube videos out there to figure out how to utilize it um, to get you started in that regard. There's also a lot of marketing companies that can help you um, do, do this for you if that's not uh, your vibe or you, know, you need to focus your time and energy elsewhere. Um, but highly recommend everyone take a look at what that looks like for them and their business. Um, also important to note here, just where your users are coming from. If you are primarily targeting folks in Virginia or North Carolina or the Eastern Seaboard and you're getting people from Madagascar constantly seeing your website, what are you doing? Like, what's going on there? Why is that happening? Figuring out those kinds of things is important. Social media also has its own analytics. Um, each of the sites, you can go into your um, profile and turn on analytics tracking and figuring out where people are, how are they engaging with your posts? Are they seeing just like, you know, seeing the posts, but not stopping? Are they scrolling past it? Are they clicking on the links? What are all those things? Um, those social media analytic tools can help determine that as well. Um, and then finally, also examining um, your sales. A lot of folks um, use something like Square, a similar um, payment processing system, and those websites, those services also have analytics um, built in to be able to help you track, you know, at this event, I sold X number of products, but didn't sell, you know, anything of why, well, I'm going to something very similar next week, I need to make sure I double up my stock on the product X and maybe bring less of product Y um, to try to gauge, you know, what's selling, what's not selling, stuff like that. Fundamental business truth number three, does your revenue exceed your cost? Um, you've got to look at how large your market actually is, um, AKA how many customers you expect to have, and then compare that to your projected costs, um, in both in to produce your product um, as well, both fixed and variable, um, and then cost to have your company. Um, 
versus what you're actually projecting your cost to your customers will be. Uh, looking at that budget of income versus expenses is very vital to figuring out, you know, okay, I am spending way more in expenses than I'm bringing in an income. Where can I balance those things? And finally, follows legal and regulatory. <laughs> um, bottom line, your business has to be legal. You got to pay your taxes. Uh, you got to think about, do I need business insurance? Do I need some sort of specialty insurance related to, to my specific business or industry or whatever that looks like? Do I need specific licenses? Do I need to, you know, be a licensed vet to practice? <laughs> um, what kind of, you know, business licenses do I need? Do, who do I need to report to? All of those sorts of things. Um, bottom line, it's not going to work if it's not legal. So how do you, how do you do that? Overall, these are the four fundamental business truths. Um, questions, comments, thoughts? How do you view the idea of a, a lost leader into <clears throat> revenue and, and cost models, right? Like if we're talking about a segment of your business, if... Um, like Costco and purchase or chicken. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I'm just, I mean, I understand in the macro, right? Dollars in, dollars out. But is that, do you segment that more under marketing or target audiences or, or how, to, how does that concept kind of fit into this more broadly? So for just level setting with everyone, um, everyone knows Costco's rotisserie chicken is $5, right? It's always been $5. And they've said time and time again, they're not going to raise the prices. Um, but who goes into Costco and only spends five dollars? You never do, and it's always in the back of the store. You have to walk through the whole store to get there. Um, that is ultimately a loss for Costco. You know, it's the cost of the chicken is not five dollars to them, and so they're losing money. But they're making money on you going into the store and seeing the rest of their products. And ultimately, I never leave Costco without spending more than two hundred dollars. So, yeah. Um, but when you're like at a startup level, you can't afford to take that loss right. um, unless you can really like it. It would be my professional recommendation not to, to go into business starting to take a loss because um, how are you going to get yourself out from underneath that? Um, figuring out those, okay, now down the line, I've been making a profit. I can afford to take this loss because I know that this loss will lead to more sales. Um, that kind of balance. But at the beginning, when you're just starting out, it wouldn't be wise in my opinion. Got it. And, and I, I say that more so thinking about like software companies where your initial subscription is free or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and so... Um, and Tom, I see your hand and I'll I'll get to you in one sec. Um, in, in that regard, like when you do those free trials with your initial customers to product test and stuff like that, you have to decide at what point do I convert them because now my product has been tested out um, and it's, you know, we've got the bugs out, we've got the kinks out. Uh, or do I just say, okay, this we're we're done, we're moving into like paid only mm -hmm. from now on, and setting that up in those early conversations with your customers to say like, hey, I'm giving you this for free because I know that there's going to be some kinks that need to be fixed mm -hmm. out. But when we get to like full market, it's time. Yeah. So, Tom. So it, it's a great question. I, I'll offer a little bit of a different uh, thought as well that. There's kind of this concept of loss leaders and and you know freemium models, other things where yeah you you might not be fully covering the cost of what you're selling until it gets on the market. Jen talked about that nicely, but the bigger thing that that we see sometimes with uh, companies at the very beginning uh, of launch is you need to realize that just the product development is all losses. And, and the people in your company that are just building product, like they're, they're, they're writing the software that are, you know, maybe they're stocking the shelves or, you know, the, the people just doing the work in the business, that's really, really important work. But that's all losses. And so having, having this mindset that I have to have sales that don't just cover the cost of the product, 
but cover the cost of all that other stuff, uh, including the time it took, you know, the, the, the costs in the background before I even start selling. Uh, that's really important. And, and it's why we always encourage folks like David, you talked a little bit about what you're building, like even before it's done, it's good to start selling because the sales cycle takes a while before somebody maybe buys an enterprise tool, like start selling it even before you're finished. So by the time you're finished, maybe you're getting that reven revenue faster in time to cover those earlier losses. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Other thoughts, questions? Well, just to summarizing back the, the truths uh, first, what problem is your business solving? Um, everybody at the foundation of a business has to solve somebody else's problem. If you're just solving your problem and trying to push it onto the market, probably isn't gonna work. Uh, so who in the market's problem are you solving? Where do you fit into that? And is that really large enough going into, are you able to connect your solutions to your customers? Are you being able to reach those customers? How large are they? Um, where are they? Why do they want to buy your product? Kind of who, what, when, where, why, and how? Um, and that will lead into your revenue. Uh, are you going to be able to only sell something that to five people or to 500 people or 5,000 people? Uh, and what point do you need to balance your costs and your revenues? All of those kinds of things. And bottom line, it has to be legal. Got to pay your taxes, got to have your insurance, got to uh, have your licenses, all of those good things, all of that to establish a legal entity. So. Business is all about solving problems. Um, you're looking for demand, you're looking for these things, you're looking to connect with solutions or connect with customers, um, connect your solution to customers. And um, technology is a great way to use that. You are one piece in a very large puzzle of the world. Um, and we're happy to help uh, continue on that journey. Uh, just a couple of quick things of upcoming and next steps. We will continue this Bagels and Business series, um, both virtually and on, um, virtually and in person on May 11th with customer discovery. We'll go in deeper on who are your customers, the customer persona, um, where do you find them, how do you engage with them, and then a little bit on the scripting of what do you ask customers. Um, customer discovery is a never-ending journey. Uh, no matter what stage of your business you are in, you need to be talking to your customers about what, what their problems are, how you are connecting to them, um, what changes in your business you need to make, stuff like that. Um, and then real quick, Tom, are you seeing the website? Yes. Okay. Um, we also have a program called Riot Foundations, which is for new and idea stage businesses or anybody that wants a refresher in business. Uh, it is a little bit of a, a deeper dive of this series uh, that we have an upcoming cohort for starting in June. Um, and you can read about what to accept, expect in the program on our website. Um, it is about three hours per week. We meet Mondays um, from 5.30 to 7 here um, or online for an hour and a half class session. And then um, I meet with you for a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one outside of class. Uh, and then we have like small little assignments to do in between class and the one on ones so we can talk about it. Um, Katrina, do you want to talk about the program? Um, I thought it was really valuable. I just finished it. So it really helped me to kind of focus on my startup and the things I needed to develop. I thought it was helpful, especially the one on ones. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we do, uh, this is just a registration. We have registration deadlines of May 26th, the latest, um, and then I'll schedule an initial call with you to dive deeper into what your needs are um, and what you want to get out of the program. And then the session dates are listed online and you can register on our website and I will make sure to send everyone here today this link um, as well as information for the next session. Cool. Questions, comments, concerns? Okay.
So uh, folks online, uh, I have your emails uh, via registering, but I will, so I'll send you a follow-up. If there's any um, additional questions you wanna spend some time with me with, we can set up a meeting. Folks in the room, I'm happy to continue talking right now. So, cool. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Bye. See ya. I wonder if we could get like a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Up there.